Hey guys, it is Carl Brown for GuitarLessons365.com. Have a killer song, one of my favorite Pantera songs for you today. We're going to learn how to play Mouth for War. So um, this uh, has the typical Pantera tuning that you see a lot. Uh, Dimebag used a lot of different tunings. Obviously, he, he used like standard, um, drop D, drop C sharp, D standard, or whatever. But whenever he usually did it, whatever tuning he was in, he would also detune that almost a quarter step. So on this album, this song is actually, you can consider it to be in standard tuning, about a quarter step flat. So he would see it as, uh, now I think his tech actually explained it, that um, he would always put Dime's guitar a half step down, so into like E flat tuning, so everything half step down across the whole guitar and then raise the pitch 40 cents on if you have a tuner, a digital tuner that can do that, um, just down to the, how many cents it is. Um, what that does is that puts it almost right between, a little bit flatter than a quarter step down. I'm playing this in standard, um, so you can really just see it as standard tuning, just you know slightly detuned or whatever. But if you want to get exact what's going on here with the tuning, uh, and be able to play with the album. It's if you have a tuner that you can adjust the sends, go down to E flat tuning and then raise it 40 cents. All right, enough of that. So let's get into the track. Um, you know, Dime's my favorite metal guitarist of all time. So um, he'd be really. Um, he's got some really cool riffs and some really cool solos in this one. So we're going to take a look at all of it. So this opening riff. <laughs> All right, so that's going to heavily palm muting the notes on the A string. You're going to go 0, 1, 2 on the A string and a little bit of a burst. So let's just go down and down. And then you start chugging on that A string. And then you start doing the, um, the hits there on the full power chord. So that's just the second fret power chord built, a, built off the A string. So, you know, you see that I'm just, when I'm doing most of the hits, just on that uh, palm muted second fret there on the A string. So those hits are not palm muted, and just obviously just across both notes of power chord. The hardest part is timing that. So you might want to just practice that by itself. All right, so you, as you build to the end of that riff, he starts letting go of that strict palm muting, I mean, and, and just kind of opening up the rivet. And then we get to uh, this main riff of the song. All right, so this is also going to be the chorus of the track. Um, it's funny, all these riffs in the intro of the song before the vocals really come in um, are pretty much all the riffs, all the verse, chorus, and pre-chorus in the song. So, so we have this, open E power chord, then you hit the o E string again, and then you're going to grab the third fret, the power chord off the third fret of the uh, low E string, and slide it up to the seventh row. And then the open E, and then back to that power chord. So it is. And then do that again. And slide again. And then back to that chord. So we have this real slow. Repeat. Slide, hit. Slide, slide. It. 
And on this last one, going into the next row, he it goes up here. And he plays the octave, not the power chord. So it's the seventh fret there on the low E, uh, ninth fret on the D. And you're going to hit that and slide down. And then we have those harmonics, which happen a lot here. Now these harmonics, best place I can see to put them is, a, is on the D and the G string, lightly touching the D and the G string, um, about a third of the way between the second and third fret. So I would call it like 2.3. And really kind of pick closer to the bridge. So that's where I'm kind of being able to recreate that a little bit better. So we have us, um, you hit those two strings, harmonics, um, um, four times. And then we have this next. I think you get the picture. All right, so this one moves around quite a bit, and we keep hitting those harmonics, the same harmonics between each. Uh, time around. So we have this hit the low E open and then the open E. Then you're going to play the sixth fret power chord off the low E. So all these power chords here are going to be off the low E string. All right. So you play this sixth fret power chord, then open, and then you're going to play the seventh fret power chord to slide it up to eight. So and then you're going to slide five to six in the open E. So, it's so you see after they did that slide from seven to eight, have a low E open, slide five to six. Then open low E again, play three, three fat power chord. Open low E, slide three to five. Open E, and then slide two to three. So that's most of the riff, and then back, you see they keep between these slides, it keeps uh, each hit or slide, he's got that in the low E open once. So we have this. that low E open, and then back again. And then when we get to the three down here, that's the first time you just jump over and play those harmonics four times, the harmonics we covered in the previous riff. So all together. All right, so now just as the when the vocals come in, uh, Phil and some vocals come in, we have two initial hits on this, on the, the big power chord, open power chord, open E, and then going into the same riff. So we kind of like this. And this last time, you're going to hit those harmonics four times. And then back to that riff that we started the track with, which is really is the pre-chorus of the song. Same thing. End of the chorus. All right, so nothing new there. Um, and then we go back through all the same riffs again. There's nothing really uh, new to learn. Let's double check here. All right, so um, then we basically... Then the second time around through the chorus, 
uh, we're going to have the solo. So I'm going to check, do the solo at the end of the, this lesson. Uh, right now, we're going to cover the rhythm underneath the solo. Uh, so that looks like this. So this is kind of the single note version of after the solo, it goes into a full kind of power chord version of this riff. So this will get a lot of the next riff done as well. So we're going to first hammer on two to four on the low E string. And then kind of palm mute that four a couple times. Then over to two on the A string, and then back to four on the low E. Low e. So this. Then you're gonna hit that again after a slight little pause. Then jump up here. We're gonna go six, five, four on the A string. Then shift down to the second fret a couple times. Then down to the second fret of the low E string. And then the open eight. Enjoy this. Then you're going to end the riff by doing octaves again, this time off the 7th fret of the A string. So 7th on the A, 9th on the G there. And just do a little 7, 6, 5, and put a lot of vibrato on them. And repeat. So now coming out of the solo, we basically have, like I said, the full power chord version of the riff. All right, so that is, uh, let's just do a full power chord version of you know how to do that. So it's just, so just side that two power chord up to four. Jump over to the second fret power chord of the A, then back to four. Kind of same exact rhythm we did before. Then six, five, four, two. Two on the low E. So just follow the same riff we just did. Then up to the power chords instead of the octaves up here. So like this. Now we have a little harmonic, which sounds like off the seventh fret of the B string. And then you can just do a little, a little kind of a bar dip there. All right, and then go through that riff one more time. All right, and then it just kind of ends on that. And then we get to the really fast section um, at the end of the track, um, which sounds like this. shorten it a little bit just to, for time's sake here. So we're just kind of doing this. We're just playing playing the fourth fret power chord with the low E a couple times. 
and then just sliding it down to two and then back up to four. So when you slide back up, hit it, then hit it again, slide. All right, then we had that little, uh, really cool little part here. So that's hammering on two to four, heavily palm muted. Well, when you initially do the hammer on, you don't have to palm muted, but then when you get to the four, now I'm gonna just, okay, straight, just kind of alternate picking on that with a heavy palm muting. Then you're gonna jump up here, play seven on the low E, five on the A, open D string. So it is. Then that uh, little hammer and palming again. Now this time I'm just gonna play five on the um, low E and three on the D, uh, three on the A, and that's it. So repeat. And then back to that riff. All right. So when he does that. Oh, he actually goes back to the riff, and then jumps right back into that. So he doesn't do it very long. And then we get back to that same riff. To the very end of the track. All right, so now let's go back and take a look at that guitar solo. I'm gonna play through it real quick for you, and then we'll take a look at it note by note. So that's got some crazy stuff in it, obviously. So um, now we're going to be, uh, some of these licks are very pattern oriented, like very fast lick at the very end. Um, so it's not that difficult to really kind of get it uh, down note for note. Um, not that it's not very hard to play, but it's easy to memorize at least. All right, so let's get to work. So this first phrase looks like this. All right, so that's just gonna be a hammer on from four to six on the D string. I think you're gonna jump up here to the eighth fret on the G, back to that six on the D, and up to the nine on the G string. I'm sorry, B string. Do a big bend there. That's a step and a half bend. So we have this. All right, and then we're gonna slide into the ninth fret on the G, and then I'll roll over to the ninth fret on the B, and then the 12th fret, bend, and then a bigger bend, release, pull off 12 to nine. So all together, Next phrase. All right, so we're gonna uh, be here at this, these double stops, 16th fret on the G string, 19th fret on the B. So play those together like one, one, two, three, four. And then stops, it goes. One more time. And then pick it again, a couple times. And then slide it up to uh, two frets. And then you're gonna go into this. 
So that's a slide into the 17th fret there on the B string. Play 16, 19 on the high E string. Bend that up and then really bend it. So with this. All right, next phrase, moving on along. All right, so uh, once again, he's uh, now moved up to the 21st fret and he's kind of doing this bend. So. so kind of bending and releasing and continually picking that note. And then on this last one, when he does the bend, he's gonna grab the B string with his, he's, he's doing this bend with his pinky, by the way. So he's grabbing that and he's hitting both of the strings down here so you get that really kind of, kind of dissonant bending sound. He's basically just catching the B string in there. And letting them kind of just, you know, he just releases that together. All right, now we have this, uh, this fast lick, the kind of muted, palm muted fast lick at the end of the solo. Um, so now I'll go through it slow here and then I'm gonna explain the pattern to you guys. So the, it actually looks like this at kind of a slower tempo. So I'm gonna stop before the little bluesy licks there. Now this pattern is, um, Dimebag uses this quite often. It's obviously one of his favorite kind of alternate picking patterns. It's easy to understand, hard to get up to a very fast tempo because of the string crossing required because he uses, he uses strict um, alternate picking here, um, but it, it really requires you to skip around the strings a lot and you have inside and outside the string picking just going back and forth. So um, it can be a little bit awkward. So what the pattern is though, let me just show you these opening notes. We have 13, 14, 16 on the low E, and then the same thing on the um, uh, the A string. All right, so now the pattern is he plays a, a four note pattern that can consist of three notes. What that means is we're gonna start with the first three notes. So down here at the beginning of the pattern, we're gonna play one, two, three. So that's just 13, 14, 16 on the low E. Then the last note in the four note pattern, you're gonna go back and play the first note uh, that we put, we did. So it's one, two, three, four. All right? So what he does is he sequences that pattern up through this scale. So he has this, what he just did there. And now he's gonna do the exact same pattern, but now starting on the second note in the scale. So we're gonna start now here at the 14th fret. So we're gonna go three notes up from that, one, two, three, now that first note there on the A string, and once again, the fourth note is gonna be the same as the first of those notes that we played, which is at the 14th fret on the low E. So it's, so we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then he continues that, now starting from the third note in the scale, one, two, three, and then of course the fourth note is back at the, the one we played first there at the 16th fret. So we have 13, 14, 16, 13, and then 14, 16, 13 on the A, back to 14 on the low E, then 16 on the low E, 13, 14 on the A, back to that 16. So I think you should be getting this pattern. All right, and then we're gonna, here we're gonna mix it up a little bit. We're gonna play these three notes, one, two, three, where we finally made it to the A string. We're gonna go one, two, three, but what he does here is he shifts up. He uses this as an opportunity. He doesn't go back and play the first note here. He plays the second note by shifting up with his index finger and grabbing that 14th fret. So that's the last note in this pat four note pattern. So we have this one, two, three, four. So that little shift there can kind of throw some things off because um, it breaks the exact pattern that we were doing. But we have this so far. All 
All right, now from here, he's going to start here with these series of notes. So he has, um, um, so he, he just played the 14th fret there. That was the last note of that next, that last pattern though. So the first note of the next pattern, let me just get you the notes in your hands. It's going to be 16, 18 on the A string, 14, 16, 18 on the D. So we're going to start that pattern again, that sequence from this note, the 16th fret on the A. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, then back to that note on the A string. You see that? So still the same exact pattern, and then now starting that from this note. All right, and then now from this note. So we're all on the D. So you see what I'm doing there, just, just taking the same sequence up. So all together. All right, now this last pattern, we're gonna go into that blues lick with it. We're gonna... So, I'm gonna, uh, so that's really the end of this sequence right here. So, we just did that. We're gonna go 16, 18, and when we get to the 15 on the G string, it's really the end of it. You're gonna go up to 16, hit it a couple times, hammer on to 18 and do that bend. All right, so all together. All right, now from that bend, we have this. All right, so this is kind of a common blues lick here, so you probably have seen this before. So we go into that bend. You go to 16 on the B string, pull off 19 to 16, and then, so we have to do that bend right there on the 19th on the um, B string, and then we're going to do that lick, 16 on the high E, pull, on, uh, pull off 19 to 16 on the B, into the 18th fret there bend on the G, so that's a very common blues lick. Then we're gonna do it again, except this time we're gonna do the, after the pull off, we're gonna do the bend of the 19th on that B. And he repeats that a couple times. So coming out of that bend again. All right, so uh, let me just get this right. So the last time, after we've re repeated between, you're gonna do that a couple times, and you're gonna go uh, after you. Uh, you're gonna go up and do the bend here after this pull off on the B up on the 19th fret, a big bend there at the 19th fret, and then release, pull off to 16 into the bend of the uh, 19th fret on the B string. So from that bend. So that is it for uh, Mouth of War. Just an intense song. Uh, just got so many cool stuff. Dimebag, greatest metal guitar player of all time, in my opinion. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.